Your date of birth holds all the secrets to your soul. Huh? You give us your date of birth, we'll tell you the secrets to love, the secrets to lust, and who the best person for you just might be. I have the answers. Check out Secrets of Birthdays at secretsofbirthdays.com. So Hello magicians and welcome back to Soul Horoscope's weekly update from my webcam to yours. I'm Christopher Oteki, your host to the universe. And a couple of quick little announcements. One, Nikki Bright, a creativity expert. She's having two seminars. They're 90 minutes, one on a Thursday night, one on a Sunday morning. This is to jumpstart your creativity. So if you're trying to manifest love, a creative project, uh, maybe even trying to get pregnant, this is the way. She'll get you to your heart chakra and in 90 minutes, it's $24.95, super affordable. And Carolyn Nagel's videos will come out next week, as it turns out, we're gonna line them up with the sun in Libra. We think that's a better way to learn, so thank you for your patience. Uh, they will be available, and I'll let you know when you can download them. Well, Pisces, we are working on your opposite sign, which is the sun in Virgo, which happens to be the way you relate. We began with working on your mirage, your relationship policy to yourself. Last week, you started working on how to move that into synergy energy and into long-term relationships. And this week, we're going to light cast what you want in LTRs, the long-term relationship strategy. Quickly to review, the Virgo energy comes from our heart chakra, so this aligns with your heart. Uh, it is the IB state of the awareness. There's three, uh, tra there's three chapters to these uh, growth. One is live, the second is love and be. Now, we're in the love stage this week, how you love, how you connect, and we're going to move and end the week uh, in the B stage, the master shui, and I'll talk more about that in a bit. But for the Pisces, it's your marriage, your marriage and how you balance. That is what we're working on in reality, the sun in Virgo. So we start off on Monday. It's actually sunny and super childlike. Mars rules the day, so I think you're feeling uber good. And the moon is putting emotional focus on your inner child. The planets have a lot going on uh, this week, and there's some major themes I want to point out. For one, Mercury is now past the sun, so we now think ahead. And when it comes to relationships, you are beginning to think ahead, perhaps thinking for your future now, not so much what went wrong in the past. So with Mercury ahead, we are thinking ahead and racing ahead, and so reality is going to feel like it's moving faster. Uh, this trine with the Venus in Leo is a major theme, and on this particular day, Monday, I think you will have a breakthrough. Expect some sort of minor breakthrough in your ability to receive in the moment. This might even be your ability to accept what you're worth because this trine between Uranus and Venus says you are dynamically this week connecting, raising your prices uh, with actually feeling better in the moment and feeling happier in the moment. And then Saturn. Saturn over the weekend, we ran into the deadline. It's now time to uh, to commit to certain trust or intimacy policies. This is what you've worked on for two and a half years since October 2009, and now it is time to move ahead. So this week, you're going to find reality races ahead with all of your boundary changes, putting them into motion immediately. It's really cool to watch. On Tuesday, Mother Earth rules the day, so we are holding space. The moon is still in Cancer, so your inner child is playing. It's a good creative day. It's a good light casting day for you, especially with Mother Earth ruling. Basically, you want to squat on this new relationship's policy. That's what you're creating, a way of being fair, a way of relating to others. And so on Tuesday, you're just squatting. You're seeing what the universe makes out of it. Uh, as we had said, Mercury does cross over uh, the sun and keep moving. And the moon, as you can see, is heading for Venus. We're going to have light cast day here uh, in a couple of days. Whoops, excuse me about that. Ooh, here we go. Then Wednesday, it's Love Fest Day. And this is the most powerful day of the month to tell everyone you love them and surrender to your own heart chakra. This is a big part of where we know to go right? Our heart really tells us where to go, and on Love Fest Day, you can begin to feel it. Now, when the moon is in Leo, that means that your emotions are focused on your reality, so this should be a very uh, magical and colorful day, I think, for you, really feeling sunny and feeling happy. Yeehaw! Looking at the planets, uh, the moon is on top of Venus, and that is really what causes Love Fest. As the moon crosses Venus, our emotions are able to uh, receive whatever Venus is receiving. Venus is in Leo, so Venus is uh, plugging into love. And so you are feeling the love on this day. And of course, I think this is the way the universe wants us to feel. Now, one interesting thing that might lead to feeling better is Mars square this conjunction. 
Mars up in Scorpio is showing it's time for you to draw some emotional philosophical boundaries. That by drawing new emotional philosophical boundaries, you're able to open up your inner child and receive love in the moment. So that's important. And then there's that trine again to Uranus, which means as you open up to love in the moment, you immediately start to feel more valuable at large. So I think it's a powerful love fest day. Make sure you tell everyone you love that you love them. On Thursday, Jupiter rules the day, so it's almost like Love Fest Part 2. Sunny and breezy is how I'm describing it. I think you will feel everything going on in your moment. That's why I say breezy. You're hyper aware to your reality. But Jupiter ruling the day means you're going to expand. And remember, this month's topic is relationships. So now that you're beginning to feel uh, what relationships can be, we are now in the master shui level. In other words, we're looking in the mastery of balance, the mastery of relationships, the mastery of mirage. And mastery comes from being able uh, to master your emotions because the most fluid place to manifest is in our passion, which is emotions. Uh, the planets themselves, uh, I just want to point out where Jupiter was. Let's not forget Jupiter itself is helping you to expand the way you self-nurture. So there's probably uh, a synergy that needs to be recognized on this Jupiter rule day to where your intentions and directions with long-term relationships are in synergy with the way you take care of yourself and the home and family you are still expanding and learning about. So uh, Jupiter rule day, expansion, feeling the love in the moment, almost a love fest part two, I think. Then comes Friday. Now, Friday is a Uranus rule day, and I think this is a breakthrough only day. Only those who've done no work in the whole transit will have, I think, a breakdown. And the breakthrough comes through the master shui, which is emotionally surrendering to the potential and synergy of you and someone else. Uh, the moon is well into Virgo, and we're on countdown now uh, for light cast day, which will be in 24 hours. So you're starting to have your emotions catch up to all this relationship work, where you're starting to feel the results of your work. Now, if you've been doing good soul work, you'll feel great. If you've been uh, not doing your soul work, this could be breakdown in the classic sense. The planets are all jumbling up there, and you can see we're on uh, preparation for light cast day. And for a few hours on Friday, the moon will oppose Neptune, which is that God versus reality we felt earlier. And literally for you, it'll be a tension of your feelings about relationships uh, over to your ego, trying to feel strong and trying to hold, uh, hold space or hold, hold credit. So there's a little bit of uh, ego versus relationships. And really, you know, if, as long as your ego is being intuitive and surrendering to Neptune or surrendering to your intuition, you should, just by using gut instinct, be able to make things work for you. All right. Then comes, we got a light cast day. Woohoo! Where we're going to hold space and manifest. The most powerful day of the month to uh, set our intentions out in the universe. You will be cloudy on this day and you'll be light casting. It's a Mercury rule day, so that means we're going to be doing a lot of thinking on this particular day. Now, if you're not familiar with light cast day, I have made a little illustration. Bum, 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 bum. Light cast day comes really from the moon crossing over the sun, which, you know, in classic astrology is the new moon. And as the moon approaches the sun, we go through this process where a lot of people get tired. They start to have uh, ascension symptoms, so to speak, because you're releasing at this point as your emotions try to connect to your general awareness. So you're trying to get your emotions behind your marriage, behind your new philosophy of balance. And this means you've got to let go of lost battles and let go of other things. Then, of course, you have the point where the moon actually crossed the sun. And this is where we say, fill your heart with love and cast light out into the universe uh, in a meditation form of what you want to draw in with relationship and marriage or where you want to ascend to. Then the moon will cross Mercury, which means our emotions then integrate with our intellect. So this is a powerful light cast day. It's a one-two punch. Uh, we, ha we have not just our, mo uh, not just our heart, uh, not just our emotions, but our intellect aligned right away. And Mercury, again, is ahead of the game, let's not forget. So uh, as a result, we are thinking ahead. Now, as we are light casting, we've got this Bermuda Triangle over our heads, which means there are things we don't know. We don't know, in your case, what this means or where you'll end up in society. You don't know how this will directly affect your overall self-esteem. That's what these squares are. It's okay you don't know. It just means that we're going to focus on one thing, and that is your new relationship, me ridge, balance, etc. That's what you're like casting on this day. Then on Sunday, it's a beautiful day, really, a Venus rule day, so we kind of really have a nice uh, kind of beginning of fall, I think, feeling. Now, there might be a chance of rende for you. That's because the moon is now shifting into Libra 
Libra, pulling emotions after your honeymoon like cast day into trust and intimacy. And really, there's a few things I want to point out here with the Sunday planets. One, this Bermuda Triangle doesn't go away, uh, but if you notice, the moon now picks up where Mercury was. Mercury is offline on Sunday, so we are just uh, zero degree. We're not really easy to think, or it's not easy to think, it's not easy to communicate. Uh, but the moon then, our emotions pick up that fear. So just a warning, you might have fears come up on Sunday, fears of your career and fears of whether or not, um, excuse me, fears of your social impact and whether or not there's going to be a financial impact to these changes you're making in marriages. But that's okay. We're going to work on that next. And that's what uh, the next transit is about. So no worries there. And then this opposition, there's a moment where the moon opposes Uranus. This is where you might feel or get vulnerable that your recent changes of where you want to manifest your relationships, etc., might be imposing or might be at odds with money. It might be as simple as I want to get married, but I can't afford it. Remember, you've got to, Uranus, innovate your sense of self-esteem and your sense of abundance. So we've got time to do that. But I just want to point out there might be some clouds on this Venus ruled Sunday. Okay, my Pisces, that's all I have for your seven-day forecast. But I will be back in seven more. Until then, do some happy light casting and live, love, be.